Resurrection is the concept of coming back to life after death. In a number of ancient religions, a dying and rising god is a deity which dies and resurrects. The resurrection of the dead is a standard eschatological belief in the Abrahamic religions. As a religious concept, it is used in two distinct respects, a belief in the resurrection of individual souls that is current and ongoing Christian idealism, realized eschatology, or else a belief in a singular resurrection of the dead at the end of the world. Some believe the soul is the actual vehicle by which people are resurrected. The death and resurrection of Jesus, an example of resurrection, is the central focus of Christianity. Christian theological debate ensues with regard to what kind of resurrection is factual, either a spiritual resurrection with a spirit body into heaven, or a material resurrection with a restored human body. While most Christians believe Jesus' resurrection from the dead and ascension to heaven was in a material body, a very small minority believe it was spiritual. There are documented rare cases of the return to life of the clinically dead, which are classified scientifically as examples of the Lazarus syndrome, a term originating from the biblical story of the resurrection of Lazarus. Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> etymology. Resurrection, from the Latin noun resurrectio onus, from the verb rego, to make straight, rule, plus preposition sub, under, altered to subrego and contracted to sergo, surexi, surrectum, to rise, get up, stand up, plus preposition re, again, thus literally, a straightening from under again. Religion Topic. Ancient religions in the Near East The concept of resurrection is found in the writings of some ancient non-Abrahamic religions in the Middle East. A few extant Egyptian and Canaanite writings allude to dying and rising gods such as Osiris and Baal. Sir James Fraser in his book The Golden Bough relates to these dying and rising gods, but many of his examples, according to various scholars, distort the sources. Taking a more positive position, Trigvi Mettinger argues in his recent book that the category of rise and return to life is significant for the following deities, Ugaritic Baal, Melkart, Adonis, Eshman, Osiris and Dumuzi. Ancient Greek religion In ancient Greek religion a number of men and women were made physically immortal as they were resurrected from the dead. Asclepius was killed by Zeus, only to be resurrected and transformed into a major deity. Achilles, after being killed, was snatched from his funeral pyre by his divine mother Thetis and resurrected, brought to an immortal existence in either Leus, Elysian Plains or the Islands of the Blessed. Memnon, who was killed by Achilles, seems to have received a similar fate. Alcmen, Castor, Heracles, and Melisertes, were also among the figures sometimes considered to have been resurrected to physical immortality. According to Herodotus's histories, the 7th century BC sage Aristeus of Proconesus was first found dead, after which his body disappeared from a locked room. Later he found not only to have been resurrected but to have gained immortality. Many other figures, like a great part of those who fought in the Trojan and Theban Wars, Menelaus, and the historical pugilist Cleomedes of Astupalaya, were also believed to have been made physically immortal, but without having died in the first place. Indeed, in Greek religion, immortality originally always included an eternal union of body and soul. The philosophical idea of an immortal soul was a later invention, which, although influential, never had a breakthrough in the Greek world. As may be witnessed even into the Christian era, not least by the complaints of various philosophers over popular beliefs, traditional Greek believers maintained the conviction that certain individuals were resurrected from the dead and made physically immortal and that for the rest of us, we could only look forward to an existence as disembodied and dead souls. This traditional religious belief in physical immortality was generally denied by the Greek philosophers. Writing his Lives of Illustrious Men parallel lives in the 1st century CE, the Middle Platonic philosopher Plutarch's chapter on Romulus gave an account of the mysterious disappearance and subsequent deification of this first king of Rome, comparing it to traditional Greek beliefs such as the resurrection and physical immortalization of Alcmen and Aristeus the Proconesian. For they say Aristeus died in a fuller's workshop, and his friends coming to look for him, found his body vanished, and that some presently after, coming from abroad, said they met him travelling towards Croton. 
Plutarch openly scorned such beliefs held in traditional ancient Greek religion, writing, "...many such improbabilities do your fabulous writers relate, deifying creatures naturally mortal." The parallel between these traditional beliefs and the later resurrection of Jesus was not lost on the early Christians, as Justin Martyr argued, "...when we say Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified and died, and rose again, and ascended into heaven, we propose nothing different from what you believe regarding those whom you consider sons of Zeus." 1 APOL, 21. There is, however, no belief in a general resurrection in ancient Greek religion, as the Greeks held that not even the gods were able to recreate flesh that had been lost to decay, fire or consumption. The notion of a general resurrection of the dead was therefore apparently quite preposterous to the Greeks. This is made clear in Paul's Areopagus discourse. After having first told about the resurrection of Jesus, which makes the Athenians interested to hear more, Paul goes on, relating how this event relates to a general resurrection of the dead. Therefore having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to men that all everywhere should repent, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man whom he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer, but others said, backquote, We shall hear you again concerning this. Topic. Judaism and Samaritanism There are three explicit examples in the Hebrew Bible of people being resurrected from the dead. The prophet Elijah prays and God raises a young boy from death 1 Kings 17 verses 17-24 Elisha raises the son of the Shunammite woman 2 Kings 4 verses 32-37, this was the very same child whose birth he previously foretold 2 Kings 4 verses 8-16 a dead man's body that was thrown into the dead Elisha's tomb is resurrected when the body touches Elisha's bones 2 Kings 13 verse 21 During the period of the Second Temple, there developed a diversity of beliefs concerning the resurrection. The concept of resurrection of the physical body is found in two Maccabees, according to which it will happen through recreation of the flesh. Resurrection of the dead also appears in detail in the extra-canonical books of Enoch, in Apocalypse of Baruch, and two Esdras. According to the British scholar in ancient Judaism Philip R. Davies, there is little or no clear reference, either to immortality or to resurrection from the dead in the Dead Sea Scrolls texts. Both Josephus and the New Testament record that the Sadducees did not believe in an afterlife, but the sources vary on the beliefs of the Pharisees. The New Testament claims that the Pharisees believed in the resurrection, but does not specify whether this included the flesh or not. According to Josephus, who himself was a Pharisee, the Pharisees held that only the soul was immortal and the souls of good people will pass into other bodies, while the souls of the wicked will suffer eternal punishment. Paul, who also was a Pharisee, said that at the resurrection what is sown as a natural body is raised a spiritual body. Jubilees seems to refer to the resurrection of the soul only, or to a more general idea of an immortal soul. According to Herbert C. Bridgetow, writing in Reform Judaism's Hebrew Union College Annual, the family tomb is the central concept in understanding biblical views of the afterlife. Bridgetow states that it is, not mere sentimental respect for the physical remains that is. Not the motivation for the practice, but rather an assumed connection between proper sepulture and the condition of happiness of the deceased in the afterlife. According to Bridgetow, the early Israelites apparently believed that the graves of family, or tribe, united into one, and that this unified collectivity is to what the biblical Hebrew term shoal refers, the common grave of humans. Although not well defined in the Tanakh, shoal in this view was a subterranean underworld where the souls of the dead went after the body died. The Babylonians had a similar underworld called Erelu, and the Greeks had one known as Hades. For biblical references to Sheol, see Genesis chapter 42, verse 38; Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11; Psalm chapter 141, verse 7; Daniel chapter 12, verse 2; Proverbs chapter 7, verse 27; and Job chapter 10, verses 21, 22, and 17:16, among others. 
According to Brichto, other biblical names for Sheol were Abaddon, ruin, found in Psalm chapter 88 verse 11, Job chapter 28 verse 22 and Proverbs chapter 15 verse 11, Bor, the pit, found in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15, 24-22, Ezekiel chapter 26 verse 20, and Shakot corruption, found in Isaiah chapter 38 verse 17, Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 8. Topic. Christianity In Christianity, resurrection most critically concerns the resurrection of Jesus, but also includes the resurrection of Judgment Day known as the resurrection of the dead by those Christians who subscribe to the Nicene Creed which is the majority or mainstream Christianity, as well as the resurrection miracles done by Jesus and the prophets of the Old Testament see Judaism and Samaritanism below. Topic. Resurrection of Jesus Christians regard the resurrection of Jesus as the central doctrine in Christianity. Others take the incarnation of Jesus to be more central, however, it is the miracles, and particularly his resurrection, which provide validation of his incarnation. According to Paul, the entire Christian faith hinges upon the centrality of the resurrection of Jesus and the hope for a life after death. The Apostle Paul wrote in his first letter to the Corinthians, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Topic. Resurrection miracles During the ministry of Jesus on earth, before his death, Jesus commissioned his twelve apostles to, among other things, raise the dead. In the New Testament, Jesus is said to have raised several persons from death. These resurrections included the daughter of Jairus shortly after death, a young man in the midst of his own funeral procession, and Lazarus, who had been buried for four days. According to the Gospel of Matthew, after Jesus's resurrection, many of those previously dead came out of their tombs and entered Jerusalem, where they appeared to many. Similar resurrections are credited to the Apostles and Catholic saints. In the Acts of the Apostles, St. Peter raised a woman named Dorcas also called Tabitha, and Paul the Apostle revived a man named Eutychus who had fallen asleep and fell from a window to his death. Following the Apostolic Age, many saints were said to resurrect the dead, as recorded in Orthodox Christian hagiographies. St. Columba supposedly raised a boy from the dead in the land of Picts. Most Christians understand these miraculous resurrections to be of a different nature than the resurrection of Jesus and the future resurrection of the dead. The raising of Lazarus and others from the dead could also be called resuscitations or reanimations, since the life given to them is presumably temporary in nature. In contrast, the resurrection of Jesus and the future resurrection of the dead has abolished death once and for all. See Isaiah chapter 25 verses 8, 1 Corinthians 15 26, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10, Revelation chapter 21 verse 4. Topic. Resurrection of the dead Christianity started as a religious movement within 1st century Judaism, late Second Temple Judaism and it retains what the New Testament itself claims was the Pharisaic belief in the afterlife and resurrection of the dead. Whereas this belief was only one of many beliefs held about the world to come in Second Temple Judaism, and was notably rejected by both the Sadducees and, according to Josephus, the Pharisees, this belief became dominant within early Christianity and already in the Gospels of Luke and John included an insistence on the resurrection of the flesh. Most modern Christian churches continue to uphold the belief that there will be a final resurrection of the dead and world to come, perhaps as prophesied by the Apostle Paul when he said, less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world acts chapter 17 verse 31 kjv and there shall be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and unjust acts chapter 24 verse 15 kjv Belief in the resurrection of the dead, and Jesus' role as judge, is codified in the Apostles' Creed, which is the fundamental creed of Christian baptismal faith. The Book of Revelation also makes many references about the day of judgment when the dead will be raised. Topic. Difference from Platonic philosophy 
In Platonic philosophy and other Greek philosophical thought, at death the soul was said to leave the inferior body behind. The idea that Jesus was resurrected spiritually rather than physically even gained popularity among some Christian teachers, whom the author of 1 John declared to be antichrists. Similar beliefs appeared in the early church as Gnosticism. However, in Luke chapter 24 verse 39, the resurrected Jesus expressly states, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. <inaudible> Hinduism There are folklore, stories, and extractions from certain holy texts that refer to resurrections. One major folklore is that of Savitri saving her husband's life from Yamraj. In the Ramayana, after Ravana was slayed by Rama in a great battle between good and evil, Rama requests the king of gods, Indra, to restore the lives of all the monkeys who died in the great battle. Islam Belief in the Day of Resurrection Yom al Arabic, Yom al is also crucial for Muslims. They believe the time of Qiyamah is preordained by God but unknown to man. The trials and tribulations preceding and during the Qiyamah are described in the Quran and the Hadith, and also in the commentaries of scholars. The Quran emphasizes bodily resurrection, a break from the pre-Islamic Arabian understanding of death. Zen Buddhism There are stories in Buddhism where the power of resurrection was allegedly demonstrated in Chan or Zen tradition. One is the legend of Bodhidharma, the Indian master who brought the Ekayana school of India to China that subsequently became Chan Buddhism. The other is the passing of Chinese Chan master Pahua and is recounted in the record of Linji Pahua was known for his unusual behavior and teaching style so it is no wonder that he is associated with an event that breaks the usual prohibition on displaying such powers. Here is the account from Ermgard Schlögel's The Zen Teaching of Rinze. One day at the street market Fuk was begging all and sundry to give him a robe. Everybody offered him one, but he did not want any of them. The master made the superior buy a coffin, and when Fook returned, said to him, There, I had this robe made for you. Fook shouldered the coffin, and went back to the street market, calling loudly, Rinze had this robe made for me. I am off to the east gate to enter transformation. To die. The people of the market crowded after him, eager to look. Fook said, No, not today. Tomorrow, I shall go to the south gate to enter transformation and so for three days. Nobody believed it any longer. On the fourth day, and now without any spectators, Fook went alone outside the city walls, and laid himself into the coffin. He asked a traveler who chanced by to nail down the lid. The news spread at once, and the people of the market rushed there. On opening the coffin, they found that the body had vanished, but from high up in the sky they heard the ring of his hand bell. Topic. Technological resurrection Cryonics is the low temperature preservation of humans who cannot be sustained by contemporary medicine, with the hope that healing and resuscitation may be possible in the future. Cryonics procedures ideally begin within minutes of cardiac arrest, and use cryoprotectants to prevent ice formation during cryopreservation. However, the idea of cryonics also includes preservation of people long after death because of the possibility that brain encoding memory structure and personality may still persist or be inferable in the future. Whether sufficient brain information still exists for cryonics to successfully preserve may be intrinsically unprovable by present knowledge. Therefore, most proponents of cryonics see it as an intervention with prospects for success that vary widely depending on circumstances. Russian cosmist Nikolai Fyodorovich Fyodorov advocated resurrection of the dead using scientific methods. Fedorov tried to plan specific actions for scientific research of the possibility of restoring life and making it infinite. His first project is connected with collecting and synthesizing decayed remains of dead based on knowledge and control over all atoms and molecules of the world. The second method described by Fedorov is genetic hereditary. 
The revival could be done successively in the ancestral line, sons and daughters restore their fathers and mothers, they in turn restore their parents and so on. This means restoring the ancestors using the hereditary information that they passed on to their children. Using this genetic method it is only possible to create a genetic twin of the dead person. It is necessary to give back the revived person his old mind, his personality. Fedorov speculates about the idea of radial images that may contain the personalities of the people and survive after death. Nevertheless, Fedorov noted that even if a soul is destroyed after death, man will learn to restore it whole by mastering the forces of decay and fragmentation. In his 1994 book The Physics of Immortality, American physicist Frank J. Tipler, an expert on the general theory of relativity, presented his omega point theory which outlines how a resurrection of the dead could take place at the end of the cosmos. He posits that humans will evolve into robots which will turn the entire cosmos into a supercomputer which will, shortly before the big crunch, perform the resurrection within its cyberspace, reconstructing formerly dead humans from information captured by the supercomputer from the past light cone of the cosmos as avatars within its metaverse. David Deutsch, British physicist and pioneer in the field of quantum computing, agrees with Tipler's Omega Point cosmology and the idea of resurrecting deceased people with the help of quantum computers, but he is critical of Tipler's theological views. Italian physicist and computer scientist Giulio Prisco presents the idea of quantum archaeology, reconstructing the life, thoughts, memories, and feelings of any person in the past, up to any desired level of detail, and thus resurrecting the original person via copying to the future. In his book Mind Children, roboticist Hans Moravitz proposed that a future supercomputer might be able to resurrect long dead minds from the information that still survived. For example, this information can be in the form of memories, film strips, medical records, and DNA. Ray Kurzweil, American inventor and futurist, believes that when his concept of singularity comes to pass, it will be possible to resurrect the dead by digital recreation. In their science fiction novel The Light of Other Days, Sir Arthur Clarke and Stephen Baxter imagine a future civilization resurrecting the dead of past ages by reaching into the past, through micro wormholes and with nanorobots, to download full snapshots of brain states and memories, both the Church of Perpetual Life and the Terrorism Movement consider themselves transreligions and advocate for the use of technology to indefinitely extend the human lifespan. <laughs> Zombies A zombie, Haitian French, zombie, Haitian Creole, zombie is a fictional undead being created through the reanimation of a human corpse. Zombies are most commonly found in horror and fantasy genre works. The term comes from Haitian folklore, where a zombie is a dead body reanimated through various methods, most commonly magic. Topic: <laughs> Disappearances as distinct from resurrection. As knowledge of different religions has grown, so have claims of bodily disappearance of some religious and mythological figures. In ancient Greek religion, this was a way the gods made some physically immortal, including such figures as Clytus, Ganymede, Menelaus, and Tithonus. After his death, Cycnus was changed into a swan and vanished. In his chapter on Romulus from Parallel Lives, Plutarch criticizes the continuous belief in such disappearances, referring to the allegedly miraculous disappearance of the historical figures Romulus, Cleomedes of Astypalaia, and Croesus. In ancient times, Greek and Roman pagan similarities were explained by the early Christian writers, such as Justin Martyr, as the work of demons, with the intention of leading Christians astray. In the epic of King Jesser, Gisar, at the end, chants on a mountain top and his clothes fall empty to the ground. The body of the first guru of the Sikhs, Guru Nanak Dev, is said to have disappeared and flowers left in place of his dead body. Lord Raglan's hero pattern lists many religious figures whose bodies disappear, or have more than one sepulchre. B. Traven, author of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, wrote that the Inca Viracocha arrived at Cusco in modern-day Peru and the Pacific seacoast where he walked across the water and vanished. It has been thought that teachings regarding the purity and incorruptibility of the hero's human body are linked to this phenomenon. Perhaps, this is also to deter the practice of disturbing and collecting the hero's remains. They are safely protected if they have disappeared. The first such case mentioned in the Bible is that of Enoch, son of Jared, great-grandfather of Noah, and father of Methuselah. 
Enoch is said to have lived a life where he walked with God, after which he was not, for God took him. Genesis chapter 5 verses 1 to 18. In Deuteronomy 34 to 6, Moses is secretly buried. Elijah vanishes in a whirlwind. 2 Kings 2:11. After hundreds of years these two earlier biblical heroes suddenly reappear, and are seen walking with Jesus, then again vanish. Mark 9-2-8, Matthew 17-1-8 and Luke 9-28-33. The last time he is seen, Luke 24-51 alone tells of Jesus leaving his disciples by ascending into the sky. Topic see also 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Information Theoretic Death Metonpsychosis Near Death Experience Suspended Animation Riverworld Topic References Topic Further reading Resurrection, The Power of God for Christians and Jews by Kevin J. Madigan and John D. Levinson. New Haven, Yale University Press, 2008 C.D. Elledge. Resurrection of the Dead in Early Judaism, 200 BCE, CE 200. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2017. Nikolai Fyodorovich Fyodorov. Philosophy of Physical Resurrection 1906. Edwin Hatch. Influence of Greek Ideas and Usages upon the Christian Church 1888 Hibbert Lectures. Alfred J. Hebert. Raised from the Dead, True Stories of 400 Resurrection Miracles Lang, Dirk. The Dying and the Rising God in the New Year Festival of IFE, in, Lang, Ancient Kingdoms of West Africa, Dettelbach, Roll VLG, 2004, pp. 343-376. Richard Longnecker, Editor. Life in the Face of Death, The Resurrection Message of the New Testament. Grand Rapids, Eerdmans, 1998. Joseph McCabe Myth of the Resurrection and Other Essays, Prometheus Books, New York, 1993, originally printed in 1925 and 1926 Trigvi Mettinger. The Riddle of Resurrection, Dying and Rising Gods in the Ancient Near East, Stockholm, Almquist 2001. Marcus Mulling. Grundinformation Eschatology. Systematische Theologie aus der Perspektive der Hoffnung. Göttingen, Vandenhoek and Ruprecht, 2007, ISBN 978-3-8252-2918-4, 242-262. George Nicholsberg. Resurrection, Immortality, and Eternal Life in Intertestamental Judaism. Cambridge, Harvard University Press, 1972. Fame A. Perkins. Resurrection, New Testament Witness and Contemporary Reflection. Garden City, Doubleday and Company, 1984. Erwin Road Psyche, The Cult of Souls and Belief in Immortality Among the Greeks. New York, Harper and Row, 1925, 1921. Charles H. Talbert. The Concept of Immortals in Mediterranean Antiquity, Journal of Biblical Literature, Vol. 94, 1975, pp. 419-436 Charles H. Talbert. The Myth of a Descending Ascending Redeemer in Mediterranean Antiquity, New Testament Studies, Vol. 22, 1975-76, pp. 418-440 Frank J. Tipler 1994. The Physics of Immortality, Modern Cosmology, God and the Resurrection of the Dead, My House, Doubleday. ISBN 0-19-851949-4. External links Resurrection. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Resurrection of Jesus Christ, Catholic Encyclopedia article on resurrection in the Hebrew Bible. Jewish Encyclopedia, Resurrection The Enticement of the Occult, Occultism examined by a scientist and Orthodox priest rethinking the resurrection, of Jesus Christ cover story Newsweek, April 8, 1996 Woodward, Kenneth L. Dictionary of the History of Ideas, Death and Immortality, Resurrection, Reincarnation.